Hey everybody, it's Pete Carmesino here at Shake and Analytics with uh, this week's halftime show here on Stock Charts TV. Appreciate you tuning in. Um, you know, first and foremost, we'll talk about the geopolitical events that are happening uh, between Israel and Hamas and Gaza, and it's a terrible thing. Um, it's so terrible that it's just, it's just incomprehensible and really just no comments are necessary here. We all we are all think I think we're all feeling the same way. So um, you know, we do have to continue doing what we're doing here, but you know, we are thinking of those that are suffering right now. So without further ado, let's talk about what's going on in here in the market. Um, an incredible rally here, um, which most had thought would not happen, um, but those folks would be mistaken, unfortunately, in an odd and almost counterintuitive way. Markets do react positive to, positively um, to major conflicts. Um, not all the time, but in this case it, it is, and I'm not sure if it's directly related. Like we can't even say that. I mean, yesterday we had a bond holiday, right? It was, um, a holiday, uh, for the bond market. It's a, a banking holiday. Post office was off. Um, it, it was called Columbus day at one point. Now it's indigenous people's day. Um, so yesterday was anyway. And what happened was, you know, you saw the TLT and some bond products um, move up in price, which had pushed yields down. Now, everyone's saying that that's what's pushing stocks higher. Um, and maybe they're right. I, I don't know. But what I'm saying is, is that, um, you know, it's really uncertain at this point. So I did have a near term target on the upside here in the S&P. Uh, the fact that this has moved so quickly and so fast, um, it's just hard to kind of chart it uh, unless I was doing this every single day. Uh, so you can see this, but you're going to have to, I'll show you why I charted it. It's there and it is a, actually a gap fill on the upside. And uh, that's typically where some of these micro moves um, in a downward move might go. And I'm not calling this anything other than what it is. This is a volatile market. It's moving up and down and we were very oversold. Now, everybody likes to say that. I'm going to prove it to you. We're going to look at the bullish percent index because that's one of the indexes I've been following for many, many years in my career. And uh, it doesn't typically uh, steer you wrong on the downside, that's for sure. On the upside, it can last a little longer, right? When it's overbought, it can hang up there for a little bit. But typically, typically, not all the time, but typically on the downside, you're always going to hear the markets are oversold, right? It's very rare that someone will tell you that the markets are overbought, right? Because the trends last and there's FOMO and there's a ton of money flow and there's all kinds of, you know, cash on the sideline that moves in and rushes in to purchase. So, um, I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about the S and P obviously today. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, TLT. We're definitely going to look at that trade, right? Definitely look at that. Just my last week video was came out on Thursday, and I had talked about you know if we were if you were short this name or whatever you know that particular asset class it would probably be the time to start taking the short off the table and be you know happy with some of the gains on the downside if you were betting against it. Now, it got very close to my target of $80. I had a range, 75 to 80, to be fair. But 80 was the top of that range because it was really the high uh, back in 2008. So we'll look at that as well. Uh, I am going to look at some the bullish percent indexes of the S&P, the NASDAQ 100, and the Info Information Technology as well. I want to look at natural gas because that looks like it's interesting. The ETF itself, UNG, is actually starting to creep up. And you can only imagine why if there's tensions in the Middle East, especially if other Middle Eastern countries are involved, natural gas could spike in price based on all kinds of things that could possibly go wrong uh, overseas, right? So Europe is obviously an importer of natural gas. They get a lot of gas from Russia still, believe it or not. Uh, they get a lot of gas from Norway. They get a lot of gas from Argentina and they get a decent amount of gas from us, but not a lot. So um, in our area, we can probably produce a heck of a lot more uh, liquefied natural gas and start getting it over there. But the point is, is that at what cost, at what price? And obviously that means if there's a shortage, the price is going to go up. So we're going to look at UNG. I think that's breaking out right now. And, uh, and there's some names that I'd screen for today that I think you should fade. Again, I'm not against the market. I'm just looking at the names that are already broken down. They're already in lower rated uh, on the power gauge rating here at Chaikin. And they're already have they already have a negative relative strength, but they moved up in price recently. And those names are you know names that you could probably fade. So let's dive into these charts and see what's going on today. All right, folks, let's start here with sort of the uh, granddaddy of uh, bullish percent. It's the New York Stock Exchange bullish percent index. 
a lot of folks track this. It's a larger, you know, composite of names and maybe a better look at the overall market. Then we'll look at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 as well. But when you get into this range, it's 30 to 35 range. You know, 30 is definitely oversold. You can see my green line here is around 30. My red line is about 70. That's typically the range it falls into. When it gets below that range, you're certainly considered oversold. But if you get close to it and uh, where we are today or were in the last couple of days, it's definitely oversold, right? So there's a lot of opportunity there. You can see where how far it went on on in in the pandemic in 2020 it was all the way down to six percent. That was literally six percent of stocks on the New York Stock Exchange had any kind of buy signal on it. That's what this is. That's what this is showing. So when we get down to these levels, it's definitely oversold. I can look at the Dow Jones. Okay. Definitely got below the 30 mark, right? The low was just around, actually, it was just around 30 or so. Looks like, yeah, it got down to 30 exactly and bounced, right? It did that again somewhere around uh, March. And, you know, it typically does that unless you run into, you know, major sell offs like we did last year or again, the pandemic, which you can see all the way down here where it was almost no stocks in the Dow. Um, were, were, had any kind of buy signal on. So that was obviously extremely oversold. So keep this in your back pocket. If we ever get these capitulation days and you start to see this get into the 20s and the 10s and single digits, you know, you know you're getting close to a bottom and there's probably going to be a bounce. Now, that's on the Dow Jones, right? That's just 30 stocks. Let's look at the S&P right now. Okay, how about the S&P? Same look to it, right? Another oversold condition got below 30. That was actually a better indicator than most at this point. RSI is oversold. I don't have the RSI on all of them, but you know I do have them on a couple. And if you look back here again, look where it was in 2020. I know I'm talking about something that rarely happens here at a 1% level. Uh, you know it's oversold. And even down here, like when these get to, you know close to that 10 or even single digits levels, you know you're oversold. And so there's probably going to be you know, a bounce. So you see the strategists and everybody talking about, you know, we're oversold, we're oversold. This is part of what they're looking at, not completely, but this is another factor. Now let's look at the NASDAQ 100. Okay, NASDAQ 100 right here. Uh, now this did not get down to that level. That's pretty interesting. Don't forget, you know, we got the Magnificent Seven in there. And so they are keeping a lot of this index alive, so to speak, and from a factor standpoint or a trend or tech, tech, uh, you know, a technical standpoint, they're still, you know, pushing this index above and beyond where it might be, might not be if they those seven names weren't in there. And not only that they're in there because they have such a heavy weight on the index. So, you know, this is slightly skewed, but even there will be times, especially even last year when we saw this over, oversold down to the single digits in June of 2022, those are opportunities. Now, I don't look at these charts all the time on the videos, but I do look at them all the time on uh, my, my individual research. But when you even you go back to 2020, again, down to 2%, that's just, you know, obviously way, way oversold. But again, this one didn't quite get there, although the RSI bottom got a higher low and then turned on this. It's not something that you typically run an RSI on. I'm doing something that's a little bit unorthodox here. However, it does, you know, identify that. The only negative I see in this is that this is a lower low here on the actual bullish percent index itself. So if it fails to take out this high to get above, say, 58 or so in the next couple of days, you know, maybe that's a continuation down to the bottom. Un, un, you know, unknown at this point, but that's kind of what I'm looking at. All right. I said I'd look at natural gas. And, you know, this is a chart that I was running uh, back when natural gas was really breaking out. And, you know, you know, even myself, we were looking at you know, potential $15, uh, dollar, uh, you know, on, on the uh, contract for natural gas. You know, it never quite got there. It got resolved. There's a lot of things going on. There's a big demand that the Ukrainian war started. All those crazy factors. Well, now we got a different set of factors coming in. However, natural gas today is kind of just trading just above this long-term downward trend line, right? Which acted as support here, if you see, back in 2021, and then pushed off of there and got to new highs. Now, we are in a downtrend. Obviously, the, the moving average is crossed, but again, that's not something that you typically see or want to use as an indicator on something like natural gas. But, you know, it does seem to adhere to it from time to time. And so here, what we're seeing is this is getting up against resistance, maybe got ahead of itself here. But I think a lot of folks, including myself, are considering the fact that 
in the Middle East, if there are more issues or other countries get involved, you know, that this could spike again just on those uncertainties of supply. Really, it's going to be a supply issue at that point. So uh, it's something I'd, I'll call, I wanted to call out. We're going to look at um, UNG as well and take a look at that um, just so we don't forget to take a look at that specific ETF and how that's shaping up on the shaking charts. I think you'll be surprised to see um, how that's looking right now. Okay, uh, we can't go one video here without looking at TLT. This is something, as I said, I've been on this um, sort of like a dog on a bone here for many, many weeks um, and months in, in a row. Um, you know, called this, this was my target. We got down as low, I think it was in the 83s, but this chart shows 84.06 as the low. I'm not sure that's correct. This is a weekly chart. So if I went to a daily, let me just double check that. Yeah, I go to a daily chart. Mm, yep, it is 84.06. Yep, that's what it got to. Anyway, what I was saying last week was right around these levels, you know, if you are if you were short this and you took, you know, sort of followed my lead from all the way up here, by the way, we we're in the 148 to 140 level when we started calling this out in December 21, okay, when the Fed was telling everybody we're going to raise rates, pay attention, you know, this has fallen all the way down to 84. And I said, look, we're close enough here and you got to start taking some of this off the table if you were short. That could have meant you could have tried to trade this as well on the upside. But I just don't think there's that much room here for a big trade up. Maybe it gets back to 90 or so. That could be a good move. But just be careful with this. Uh, I just feel that rates uh, and bond prices are just still in the trends that they have been in um, until we see something, some other outside catalyst. And if you've been following my work, you know that that's the unemployment rate. Until we see that move higher, decidedly higher, over 4%, 4.5%, maybe even 5 um, I don't think fixed income is the play. Just not yet. I just think it's a little early. Okay, moving over to the Chaken charts. I said I'll look at UNG here. Um, up about a quarter of a percent today, but it's been up in the last several days um, here. Now, October 2nd or so, it started to move higher. It was around 676. Now it's trading uh, very close to eight at 790 or so. So it's up a dollar just in the last uh, week or so. And you can see the relative strength changes here. Now, we don't rate this ETF. And if you pull it up on the ACP platform, you're not going to see a rating. But when you chart it the way I chart it here, anything above eight looks like a breakout. And maybe you get to this recent high of close to 10. And then obviously other levels start to come in play, like this gap fill here at almost 14, you know, another one at almost 16, another one at almost 18. So those are kind of levels I'm looking at. But this is just potentially starting here. Again, we got winter months ahead of us. We got some political, geopolitical activity that's unfortunate, but it's happening. And so just pay attention to this. This is, you know, for me, stocks in general, equities in general are your inflation hedge. And this could be your personal inflation hedge as well against higher energy prices in your own home. Okay. And I think if we start to have a shortage, obviously we're going to see energy prices and electricity prices and all kinds of usage prices move higher if that's the case. So if I'm seeing this move here on relative strength in this particular ETF, it's telling me that people are taking positions thinking the same way. I'm going to pull up this other one too. I'm going to show you this. It's called the United, Ga uh, United States Gasoline Fund. Now this has been you know, rolling over, right? It's going the other way. So you start to see that and you, you know that was the pullback in oil. If I pulled up USO, it'll be a very similar chart to UGA. This is more of an oil ETF. You see what I'm saying? The pullback, so oil and gas follow. Now, natural gas is its own little breed of, of, of commodity. Um, although it is a byproduct of oil, um, there are, you know, stockpiles of that. And obviously, if there's any kind of shortage, you know, we, we could see, you know, uh, better prices ahead. All right. Um, let's look at some of the names here that I was talking about that are you now breaking down. Now, I'm going to show you something that unfortunately you can't do this on the ACP platform, but I can do it here on Chaken. And what I did was I was just trying to run a screen and I was looking for names where the experts are very bullish, but the technicals are telling us something else. Okay. So this is something that you might want to fade the experts on and start to look at these names because even though they've got great ratings and we're bullish on our own rating, you know, and that's based on the information that we're gathering from all of these other sources like estimate trend and, you know, analyst rating trend and short interest and things of that nature. 
the technicals are telling us some, something different. You got to pay attention to that. You know, if you know me and you know, you know what my mantra is, I'm a trend follower. And if I see trends change, I get concerned and I want to call it out. So I'm seeing some of these names like uh, NHI. We saw Black Bob BLKB is the first one I looked at. Here's one, Quanta, which we called out um, just weeks ago. But now I'm seeing something different. I'm seeing two setups, right? If the if experts are not downgrading this, you know, they're playing the hope game. And maybe they're right. I don't know. It's up big today. But I think everything's up big because it just got oversold, right? What did I say? No one's going to tell you when it's overbought. We might right here if you see this little overbought signal. You know, if it gets above there, this could be a good fade. Uh, another one I want to look at was Wells Fargo. Same setup. Uh, another one was Honeywell, unfortunately, big industrial conglomerate, uh, not up big today, but not a great looking power gauge. We're already bearish overall, but the experts are behind. It's not sure, you know, they don't move as fast as our technology does. And I think if, if it gets back to this level of our long-term trend, it's probably going to be a fade. One other one is VeriSign, another IT services company. Again, we're already neutral on our rating, right? But look where the experts are. They're very bullish. And even inside of here, you can see estimate trend, very little short interest here. Insider activity is not great by our standards. And rating trend is kind of neutral already. So in general, the way we look at the overall experts rating, this is this stock is telling us something different. And if there's any kind of downgrade going into this, you know, it could affect it negatively. Uh, it could be earnings coming out in a couple of weeks. That's October 26th. So just be careful of that. Again, bad money flow and bad relative strength, way overbought here, looks like a fade. All right, everybody, that's all we have uh, this week for the halftime show. Uh, a little bit different cadence, a little bit, uh, you know, things, different things we're looking at this week. That bullish percent is telling us something that uh, I think a lot of people have already found out and are seeing. Um, my apologies for not looking at that sooner. However, I do want to call out one more thing before I end this video. I'm going to go back to the charts because I forgot to show you something on the S&P. And this is the thing I think I said you're going to be surprised about. So let's jump back into the charts real quick. I want to show you one more chart. Okay. Sorry uh, for forgetting this. This is the chart I was really wanting to uh, to talk about. Now, I had drawn this uh, weeks ago and talked about this gap fill. Now, there's multiple gap fills here. There's one all the way down here, but that's not important yet. As I said, we'll wait until it starts to break the 200 day and even this other important level that I still have here from almost a year ago. Um, then we'll start talking about a gap fill if that even happens. Now, we got our gap fill one, two, three, four tries, right, to break through. It didn't. The bottom of this channel that I've been drawing now for, you know, several weeks anyway, had come into play, and the gap fill did as well. Both at these, these are a confluence of levels that really added to support, plus we were oversold. Now, the near-term target is another gap fill. I drew this right in between these two gaps, right? So this is roughly about 43, I'm sorry, 4405 on that low. Uh, we'll call it 4400 or so. And then um, on this high of this bar is about 4375, right? So you can see that's where I came up the target. And I was saying, um, this happened so quickly that, you know, we didn't get a chance to even talk about it. Um, that, that, you know, on, on a lot of the videos. But my point to this is, is that, if we get anything above here, I'm just not sure it's sustainable. And again, if we do, and we start to break these recent highs, if we can get above 4,600, you know, now we're talking, or 4,540 or so, but there's that recent high of about 4,607 or 4,600, and maybe, just maybe, very possible, it takes us to higher levels on the upper side, up side of that channel. I just don't know if it's going to get through this area here. we got to wait and see. So um, don't play FOMO here. Wait. You know, even if it gets above here, it's likely it could turn back and this could be support and that could be a good entry as well if you're looking to add to any of your equities. Okay, two endings to the show today. Now we're done with the video. That's the Halftime Show. I'm Pete Carmesino. Follow me on Twitter at Pete Carmesino. You can find me on there and I put up some interesting charts and some comments. Please leave a comment here on YouTube. Love to hear your feedback. Take care and we'll see you next week.